Welcome to this training video on how to use the basic features of your scientific calculator. Three commonly found calculator models in schools include the Casio FX-A3GT+, the Casio FX-83GTX, and the specific one featured in this video tutorial, the Casio FX-991EX. All of these calculators work in a similar way. If you happen to have the newer Casio FX-991CW, stay tuned for a separate video where I'll address its functionalities. In this instructional video, we are going to focus on using the ANS button on your calculator. This feature can be a time saver in your maths calculations. Firstly, ANS stands for answer. It's a convenient feature that allows you to recall the result of your last calculation. This can be incredibly useful when you need to perform subsequent operations with the same result. Here's how it works. After your initial calculation, instead of manually entering the result, simply press the ANS button. Your calculator will automatically input the previous answer, saving you time and reducing the chance of errors. Whether you're adding, subtracting, multiplying or dividing, the ANS button stores the last calculated value. It's a handy tool, especially in longer sequences of calculations. And there you have it. Using the ANS button on your calculator is a straightforward way to streamline your maths calculations. Incorporate this into your routine and you'll find it to be a valuable time-saving feature. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we'll explore the squared, cubed, square root, and cube root buttons. Let's start with squaring. Locate the squared button on your calculator. This button raises a number to the power of two. For example, to square the number five, enter five, then press squared, the result will be 25. Next, the cubed function. This raises a number to the power of three. To cube the number four, enter four, then select shift before pressing squared. By selecting shift, the calculator activates the function in yellow on the calculator. This brings up the cubed function, selecting equals and you will see the result will be 64. Now let's move to square roots. Locate the square root button. This calculates the square root of a number. To find the square root of nine, press square root nine, then equals. The result will be three. Finally, the cube root button calculates the cube root of a number. For instance, to find the cube root of 27, Press shift, then the square root button to activate the cube root function, then 27. Selecting equals and you will see the result will be three. In summary, these buttons are powerful tools for quick calculations in your mathematical endeavors. Practice using them on various numbers to become proficient. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we will explore how to use the standard to decimal form button on your scientific calculator. Locate the standard to decimal form button on your calculator. It's often labeled as SD. After entering a calculation that returns a fraction or a number written in standard form, press the SD button and your calculator will display the decimal form of that number. Let's go through a quick example. Dividing 13 by 2 gives the answer 13 over 2. Now, press the SD button. This will now show the decimal equivalent of the improper fraction. But what if you wanted the mixed number form of your answer? Selecting Shift, then the SD button will activate the function in yellow on your calculator. This will then show you the mixed number form of your answer. There you have it. Using the standard to decimal form button simplifies the process of converting numbers and is a handy tool for your mathematical calculations. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code.
In this instructional video, we will focus on using the Pi button on your scientific calculator. Understanding how to access and utilize this fundamental constant is essential for various mathematical calculations. First, locate the Pi button on your calculator. It is usually represented by the Greek letter Pi. To use Pi in a calculation, simply press Shift, then the times 10 to the power X button. Using the Shift button activates the function in yellow on your calculator and it will automatically input the value of pi into your equation. For example, if you are calculating the area of a circle with the formula pi r squared, press shift, then the times 10 to the power x button, then times, then the radius r value followed by the squared button, then click equals. In this calculation, the calculator will provide you with the accurate numerical value based on the value of pi. To convert this into a decimal, remember to use the S to D button. That's it. Now you know how to use the Pi button on your scientific calculator. Keep practicing and feel free to explore more mathematical functions your calculator offers. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we will be exploring the use of the fraction button on your scientific calculator. This feature simplifies working with fractions in your mathematical calculations. Locate the fraction button on your calculator. It's usually represented as two boxes to represent the numerator and denominator with a viniculum. To input a fraction like 3 quarters, press the fraction button. You'll see a template for a fraction on the display. Enter the numerator, press the right arrow key to move to the denominator, and enter the denominator. Once your fraction is entered, be sure to select the right arrow key again to move outside the fraction if you're going to perform any further operations on the fraction. That's it for this tutorial on using the fraction button. You can now use fractions in any calculation on a calculator. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In part one, we explored how to enter a fraction into your scientific calculator. In this instructional video, we will extend this by looking at how we enter mixed numbers on your scientific calculator. Firstly, locate the fraction key on your calculator. It's usually represented as two boxes to represent the numerator and denominator with a viniculum. Select Shift and then press the fraction key. Selecting Shift activates the yellow function above the fraction key and your calculator is now ready to receive the mixed number. Enter the whole number part. Press the arrow key to move to the numerator. Input the numerator. Press the arrow key again to move to the denominator and input the denominator. For example, to enter the mixed number three and a half, you would select shift, then the fraction button. Press three, arrow key one, arrow key two. Once your fraction is entered, be sure to select the right arrow key again to move outside the fraction if you are going to perform any further operations on the fraction. There you have it. You can now enter a mixed number into your calculator. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we will be looking at how to express a number as a product of prime factors. This method provides a quick and efficient way to analyze the prime factorization of a given number. First, enter the desired number into the calculator. Now, let's locate the prime factorization function on the calculator. This is usually denoted as fact and is a secondary function of a button activated by using the shift key first. Select shift, then the fact button to run the prime factorization function. The calculator will now display the prime factorization of the entered number. Take note of the prime factors listed 
as this represents the expression of the number as a product of prime factors. If when doing this, the calculator returns the same number, this indicates that the number is prime, i.e. can only be multiplied by itself and one. There you have it. You've successfully used your scientific calculator to express a number as a product of prime factors. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we will be using the time function on your scientific calculator. First, locate the time button on your calculator. It's usually denoted as a degrees, minutes and seconds button. There are two types of question where you are likely to use this button. One, converting a decimal number of hours into hours and minutes. Two, converting hours and minutes into a decimal form of hours so that the answer can be used in other calculations. To begin, let's look at the first scenario. I have 1.8 hours as part of an answer. What is this in hours and minutes? Enter 1.8 and then select the degrees, minutes and seconds button. Press the equals button. Your calculator will have now converted 1.8 hours into 1 hour and 48 minutes. To convert it back, we can press 1, then the degrees, minutes and seconds button. Then press 48, select the degrees, minutes and seconds button again before selecting equals. To convert this into a decimal, select the SD button twice. And there you have it. You've successfully used the time function on your scientific calculator. Remember, mastering this function can be a valuable asset in various maths lessons. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. In this instructional video, we will explore the fundamental trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent on your scientific calculator. First, ensure your calculator is in degree mode for most standard calculations. You should see a D in the upper row of your display window on your calculator. Let's start with sine. Select the sine button and then input the angle in degrees. You may have noticed that once you select sine, it automatically opens a bracket it is good practice to close the bracket after the angle. Selecting equals, and there you have it, the sine of the angle. This is the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle. Now, for cosine, select the cos button, input the angle, press equals, and voila, the cosine of the angle is displayed. This is the relationship between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The same can be done to calculate the angle between the opposite and the adjacent using the tan button. But how do you work backwards? If you're given the relationship between any two sides, you can do the inverse of sin, cos, or tan by first activating the yellow function above each button using the shift key. So if you know the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse is 0.8, select shift, press sin, and enter in 0.8. Closing the bracket and selecting equals will then give you the angle. We have now covered the basics of using a calculator for solving trigonometric problems. Practice using them on your calculator and you'll master trigonometry in no time. Pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you are ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Mark the ones you have done and reflect on any that you have got wrong. For more questions like these, scan this QR code. And there you have it, folks your crash course on using your scientific calculator. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow maths enthusiasts, and until next time, keep crunching those numbers.